This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S1 Ison and WTF Earth. Seriously, bro. Part 31. What does government and NASA know that they are not telling us? Hello, I am Thor. I am like a cross between Bill Murray and Ghostbusters, Val Kilmer and Real Genius, and Woody Harrelson in 2012. Now with that out of the way, let us begin. Well, Bruce Gary, the champion amateur astronomer who has owned this subject for the last month, confirms what I've been saying for a while, that NASA knows a shit ton. They have hundreds if not thousands of photographs that they have not released to us and are not going to release it to us. So all you who kneel at the government altar, always believing everything it says, debunk this. Debunk the champion of Ison. And see, Bruce Gary even states, I'll bet that NASA has hundreds of images with plenty of multi-band magnitudes starting from early August. Bruce Gary, the champion of ice, and has said it, amongst professional astronomers, trust and goodwill no longer exist. And in this case, government professionals don't share. Bruce Gary himself said it. It is now about competition, not cooperation. Doesn't matter if they're competing for grants, a good bunk in the dumbs, government happiness with them marching in line. This one is going to be light on the editing, heavy on the ranting. I was taking a look at www.brucegary.net backslash Ison backslash, and he has a comment on why couldn't NASA recover Comet Ison. Now, if you'll remember, Bruce Gary is the amateur astronomer champion who has basically been owning the Ison scene since August 12th. For about a month, Bruce Gary, who is a badass, has been pumping out the majority of all the useful data that we've been seeing in the last month. Now, he gives his take on NASA's inability to deliver us any new raw data in the last five months, which I found very fascinating. So join me in looking over this, if you will. He starts off with, some of the amateur astronomer community have barraged the CIOC with that question, why couldn't NASA recover Comet Ison? Now, if you will notice, Bruce Gary leaves out the N of the CIOC. The N standing for NASA, the CIOC standing for Comet Ison Observing Campaign. So right there, Bruce takes a slight shot. And NASA just by like not even including them on the observing campaign because they haven't really put out anything. They had some big function where they asked all the amateur astronomers to get together and give them all their data while NASA gave up no data. And Bruce Gary proves if you are smart enough, strong enough, and determined enough, you can overcome the disease of having two first names. So thanks for that. Some of the amateur astronomer community have barraged the CIOC with that question, why couldn't NASA recover Comet Ison? Carl Batoms posted an answer at his blog. Oh yeah, I seem to remember that. Let's go to that article real quick. Guys, I think I had something to do with that. I put up a video asking, hey NASA, where are those fucking photographs? F-U-G-G-I-N. I'm not cussing. And then I asked my subscribers, my friends, my kick-ass party people, and all the astonishers to please email or Twitter tweet somebody this question. And then I got a response. Apparently they did, because both Carl Batoms and Bruce note that NASA got barraged with a specific question around a specific date, which just happened to be right after the video I put up. So you're welcome, or I'm sorry, depending on, on which one you want. Back to the Bruce Gary at hand. The following are my thoughts, and they're meant for other amateurs Wink, wink. The professionals would be laughing at the obviousness of what I'm about to write. All right? You got that? They're laughing at us. First, how do we know NASA didn't recover Comet Ison before my August 12th imaging? Oh, we know. Man, they've been taking photographs of that thing from day one. They probably have thousands of photographs we have never seen. So, I mean, we just know that there's a ton of crap that they're not giving us. Would they bother to notify the amateur community? No. No, they wouldn't. Even after setting up the NASA Comet Ison observing campaign, obviously at this point, that whole campaign was to fish out and see what the amateur community had. They had absolutely no interest in working with the community and the public on this comet. They announced it as a comet of the century to start off with, and then they just shut up about it and let the speculations go wild. But hey, that's how our government works, man. But their strategy after announcing it as a comet of the century of leaving us in the dark is apparently what is going on. Who knows, maybe Obama has forbid them from talking about anything other than Muslim accomplishments and achievements in science and astrophysics since the year zero or whatever. I had to do this because, I mean, look at the whole Syria campaign. If you want an idea of our government action, 
Look at how Siri was handled. Or if you want a better idea of how our government bodies function, we stopped adding any debt to the national debt technically back in May. So for like four months, we have been using accounting tricks to not breach the debt ceiling, which will be breached in October. And you hear any politicians talking about that? No, they're just gonna wait to the last minute. They're gonna ram that puppy in with a shitload of pork and we're all just gonna be foobarred again. I mean, that's how our, our, our government works. They make us pay for everything and they don't give us anything in return. <laughs> Would they bother to notify the amateur community about anything? Their recovery image and the fainter than model brightness. And see, Bruce Gary even states, I'll bet that NASA has hundreds of images with plenty of multi-band magnitudes starting from early August. I think plenty is a good word. It's a good and plenty word. All right. That was dumb. See, even Bruce Gary is basically saying they have hundreds of photographs they've taken of Ison, and they're not giving it to us. Bruce Gary, the champion of amateur astronomers on Ison, he's even saying the same thing I've been saying. And now we're probably going to definitely still get our army of shills who are worshipping at the altar of government saying, hey, even though they are publicly funded, they don't deserve to give us anything. And the fact that NASA hasn't given us a new photograph in five months is awesome. And that's their prerogative. And they are way better for not doing that. We are dumbasses for even asking for information. Back to Bruce Gary. You need to understand two things about professionals versus amateurs. One, professionals have much better hardware and he capitalizes much. The only time he capitalizes anything in the whole article that he bolds the whole word. He is saying they have ground and space-based telescopes that are a hundred times better than any of you and I have. And due to their years of billion dollar budgets, their years of tradition and their total backing by the government, of course they have better shit than we do. It's like saying your home protection artillery, like three rifles, a shotgun, and two pistols is not going to be as good as the government's hardware or the army's hardware or the army's weapons, you know, or the marines' weapons. The marines are definitely going to have better weapons. NASA is definitely going to have better telescopes, satellites, than us. Two, professionals don't share. And in this case, government professionals don't share. So whatever they're going to get for that $16 trillion that they've driven up on the national debt, they're not going to share with you because you were the dumbass who got hornswoggled out of that money. So you need to leave them alone. One, all professionals in this situation are government. Two, government does not share. Not with you, the amateur taxpayer. You better get elected or get bent. So, I mean, people have accused me of picking on NASA. Oh, no, I'm picking on the government. But here you got Bruce Gare basically saying the same things I've been saying. Government does what is best for government. The private sector does what is best for the limited liability corporation. And the public i.e. the community, have been being distracted by the P and G. Hey, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and anyone who ain't part of the P and G machine in the sea is wearing milk bone underwear. I got that from Norm from Cheers. That was a great show. It is what it is, and it's a fucking Monopoly game, baby. And I'm sure the P and G offer sincere apologies. And if you don't like it, hey, you can vote in the next election, whatever the hell that means. All right, so the two points by Bruce Gary. Professionals have much better hardware and professionals don't share. The first point is obvious, which was the basis for the question. Professionals may have learned to share in kindergarten, but by the time they get a PhD, they've learned to keep their observations secret until publication. After all, why would they want to share with other professionals who are competing with each other for grants from NASA and NSF? It would be self-defeating to give one's competitors useful information ahead of publishing. Remember, publish or perish. It's true. All right, I guess if you want to be a conspiracy theorist, you could say that Bruce Gary there is saying that you can either be a published astronomer recognized and supported by the establishment or you can be a dead astronomer I know Google dead astronomers see if anything comes up from that it's true well I'm glad I'm a pseudo astronomer and like I said just like Indiana Jones for whatever reason that profession is dangerous and I watched as competition replaced cooperation. Consider the hypothetical alternative, the conjecture that NASA didn't give a high priority to a recovery image, thinking that such an image would be just a stunt because it would be of such low quality that nothing useful could be learned from it. And Bruce Gary goes on to note, I have one more piece of evidence that my observations were useless to the pros because they've been doing much better work. Only one pro has contacted me to clarify what I did. And he probably wasn't funded by NASA or NSF. 
He's basically saying none of the pros have contacted him, so he thinks that none of his images have any scientific value to them, meaning they already have hundreds of photographs, multi-band light spans. And he also stated professionals are laughing at us. And he also stated that the professional astronomers are selfish and greedy and only give a shit about making money and getting esteem. And so this whole idea that the professional astronomers are out there trying to teach us Get us more aware and more interested in science is total bullshit. That everything is corporate. The dollar runs everything. Common Ison is a metaphor for everything. And the dollar owns your ass. The dollar runs your religion. The dollar runs your government. The dollar runs your car. The dollar runs your government. The dollar is king. The banks are above the law. Debunk that, dude. And Bruce Gary leaves with P.S. During the 1960s, I was a professional astronomer in radio astronomy. At that time and before, sharing among professionals was common. Trust and goodwill existed. After moving on to the atmospheric sciences, I kept track of my old field of astronomy. And I watched as competition replaced cooperation. There was a finite number of university teaching positions, so a greater proportion of PhD astronomers were competing for research grants. Too many PhDs were competing for limited funds. Starting in the 1970s, the forces that operate when supply exceeds demand were unmerciful to the person with an IQ of less than 145 who just wanted to do astronomy for the love of it. That person was simply born a few decades too late. Such people can't compete today, so they leave the field, even if they've acquired a PhD. Those who remain employed in astronomy are super smart and also super competitive. No one holds your hand these days, encouraging you as a student to join the ranks of the professionals. If you don't already have a competitive nature, a genius IQ, you won't make it as a professional astronomer. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Bruce Gary, the champion of ice, and has said it. Amongst professional astronomers, trust and goodwill no longer exist. Why should we trust them? They haven't given us shit. Trust and goodwill have gone the way of the dodo bird. They ain't sharing with you. You don't deserve nothing. Some in the amateur astronomer community, and I want to stop right there, because community is a good word. Technically... Anyone who is not a professional astronomer in the world is an amateur astronomer. If you've ever looked up at the sun, the moon, the stars, and even thought one thought about them, you are an amateur astronomer. All right, now we got that out of the way. And community sounds a lot like communicate, except for the end part, of course. And where all the amateurs are communicating with each other, don't you think it's odd that the professionals in science aren't communicating with us much. They are racking up the national debt at a time where they are putting red light cameras on every stoplight. They have over 10,000 geosynchronous satellites in orbit around Earth that are spying on us at all times. And they are putting as many drones in the sky as the law or above the law will allow them. And basically drones are just backyard satellites. So the less they talk, the more paranoid they're getting. I don't know if anybody's noticed that, but it seems like lately the government is convinced that its own people is the enemy. Now, if you don't see this trend, there's nothing I can do for you, buddy. So I think right now it's it's hard to say that you can put your full faith in the White House, Congress, economists, in a cigar room, backdoor experts. All right, let me try that again. There you go. All right, I'm going to get back to working on 30. That one's going to be funny and weird. Wait, don't get confused. I'm not done with part 30 yet, so I'm going to go ahead and just put out part 31. This whole situation just made me mad. All right. So yeah, there you go. This one's over and done. I was speaking from the heart, which was on my sleeve. It's 2013, fall. Winter is coming. It is what it is. God bless everyone.